and welcome to Zanata Consulting's Everything You Need to Know About Zoho Desk 2023, part of our monthly webinar series here at the Zanata YouTube channel. I'm Greg Belknap. And I'm Josh Oliver. Let's get into it. So Zoho Desk, it's a product we use uh, uh, not infrequently uh, internally here at Zanata. Uh, helps us with support questions, things like that. And of course, we've implemented many a Zoho Desk uh, operation for various clients. Yeah, absolutely. And there's so many different features inside of Desk for automation and email tracking, specifically around support tickets and um, yeah, really just support management. Uh, so we use it internally. And then, like you said, uh, we use it all the time for implementing with clients. And uh, we have a lot to talk about today. Yeah, so we say we get into it. Let's do it. All righty, so today we're gonna go over product overview and I'll go over uh, kind of what the best use cases of Desk are, um, why choose Zoho Desk versus other competitors, and then we'll get into uh, department management, ticket management, uh, there's a whole knowledge base inside of Zoho Desk to support a uh, articles and then uh, presenting those articles with the public. And then Greg's going to go over automations. There's a bunch of different things in automations that we can do to trigger workflow rules, custom functions, automated emails, and so on. And then last, Greg's going to go through integrations in the marketplace. And then at the very end, we have set some time for questions and answers. So let's go ahead and get into the product overview. All right, so you may already know, uh, Zoho Desk is a cloud-based customer service software from Zoho. It is uh, uh, one of the ways Zoho offers support management. So there's a bunch of different things we can do within Desk as far as ticket management, and knowledge base resources to provide the best support to customers whenever they have a question or they want to access an article uh, on a help center. So within Desk, there's a bunch of features that are included. So we have automated ticket tracking, um, self-service portal, 360 customer view, autom automations and workflows, analytics and reporting. Uh, and then we also have a multi-channel support as well. Uh, so we'll talk about a bunch of these different items today. And then also I wanted to just kind of give you a high level overview of uh, the pricing. So with Zoho Desk, we have a few different plans available. Standard $14 per user per month, professional 23 and enterprise 40. This is at the yearly rate. So if you're paying annually, then you do get a slight discount. Uh, if you're paying monthly, you do have to pay a little bit more. Uh, the one reason, the one biggest reason why to choose Zoho Desk, if you're already on Zoho, then this is included inside of your subscription with Zoho One. So if you're on Zoho One, then you get the enterprise level edition. And this includes a uh, all of the features that they have available. And we can kind of scroll through here. We have up to 100 channels, uh, one department for feedback. We have, can do uh, 20 different departments for advanced web forms. I'm not going to go through all of this, but if you're on Zoho One, you do get the enterprise level edition, and that includes everything and uh, the above. If you're not on Zoho One, then you kind of have to weigh your odds. Uh, what is the best uh, support ticket or uh, ticket management ap application out there? And likely Zoho Desk is going to beat out the competition because of the pricing. It is much cheaper than Zendesk or uh, some of the others out there. And the features and customization within Desk is uh, a, big, uh, a big reason why you should choose it. And uh, it attracts a lot of, um, uh, yeah, uh, really it's just the, the biggest reason why you would want it to go over here is because of the cost and the customization possibilities. So next I'm gonna hand it off to Greg. He's gonna go over some departments and then uh, we'll go into some other stuff after that. All right, thank you so much, Josh. Uh, now, departments uh, in Zoho Desk are the way that you can segment your help desk into 
uh, different major categories that your tickets uh, will be coming in as. The basic question of, well, how many departments should I have? What should constitute a department? Basically, it boils down to every individual email address that you want your customers to be able to send things to, each of those emails should correspond to a different department. So say you have a support at mycompany.com for support requests or info at mycompany.com uh, for people that are just kind of wanting to know more uh, about, about your company. Every individual email, that should be set up as its own department. The way that you set up those departments is done in your settings. And then here under the general tab, we have departments. And when you pull up your list of departments, you can see that you'll have a, when you first open this up, you'll just have one single department. That'll be your support at, and then there's a email that Zoho Desk generates on your behalf. Uh, in this case, it's your username .zohodesk.com. And when you start to set up your email clients to point towards desk, very simply, all you have to do is set up email forwarding to come to these particular emails. So your clients don't need to email support at demo4zanata.zohodesk.com or whatever uh, it auto generates for you. Rather, if you're using something like uh, Outlook or Gmail, wherever your email client is stored, simply create your support at mycompany.com email address and set up the rules for whatever your particular client is to forward those emails here to this support email. And Zodesk will automatically grab you know, the person that it originally came from, the subject line, and uh, parse all of that for you. As you want to add additional departments, as I mentioned, if you have a different email that people should be sending requests to and that you can keep those separate, marketing at mycompany.com, uh, repairs at mycompany.com, whatever it may be, you uh, simply name your department, then you have the display name, how's the department will appear in the help center. Uh, the help center, we'll get into that a little bit later, but the help center is the portal by which your customers can log in and view any support requests that they've already made or generate new ones. Uh, you can create an individual logo for it. Maybe this is a department that shouldn't be displayed in your help center at all and is purely internal. You can simply uncheck this display and help center box and do that. And then you can associate different agents or agent teams to different departments because maybe not everybody has to work in every single department. One thing to note is that once you create a department, a department cannot be deleted. You can uh, set a department to inactive by disabling it. And uh, once you, and then you need to choose where to transfer any outstanding tickets or customers that were previously assigned to that department and then shift them over to say your main department if you're trying to consolidate things. And then you can see your list of any inactive departments and you can reactivate them here. But again, can't delete, can only move from active to inactive once created. Uh, one of the other things that I mentioned was uh, setting up different agents to different departments. Uh, one of the easy ways to do that is by setting up your agents into various teams. And the way that we do that, again, we'll go to our setup. And then under users and control, we have agents and teams. So I'm going to, so first off, let's look at agents just to make sure that you uh, understand. This is where you'll see the list of all of your different agents. Those are those that are working for you, answering these tickets. Uh, sending replies. Uh, you have various ways that you can uh, add agents and agents don't necessarily always have to be uh, users in your Zoho organization. You can add people as uh, light agents, uh, for example. And if you're on Zoho One, as our demo account is, you invite different users and you can add them at different uh, different permission levels. 
depending on how much access to the system your agents are going to need. Uh, in the case of Zoho One, you will need to add the person to your Zoho One organization in order to add them to Zoho Desk. But if you're on one of the individual desk plans, uh, such as standard or enterprise or professional, then you can add agents to that without necessarily making them full level users. So coming back to the uh, agents list, uh, as I mentioned, if we go to the setup and go to teams here, I can organize my agents into different teams that I could then assign to departments. So I would give a team name, choose the agents. In this case, we're on a demo account, so I've only got one to pick from, uh, but you'd be able to pick any number of agents and you can, uh, you can assign agents to a team, not only just by selecting individual agents, but you could also, if you click this little drop down, you could uh, select agents that are a particular role and bundle them into a team that way. That way the team is sort of dynamic. So as you change a user's uh, role or uh, permissions, then they get added or removed from various teams. And then as you see, you can even select other teams. So if you want to make little sub teams and then create sort of parent teams to encompass all of those agents together, you can do that as well. And once you've finished uh, editing your team, We'll go ahead and hit save. And now if we go back to the main page for the teams, you can see up here, I have support. This is one of my departments. So teams are set up on the department level. If I wanted to set up an internal team, then I could add a team to this department. And that'll do it for setting up your agents in the various departments. Now let's hop it over to Josh, who can start talking to us about ticket management and the knowledge base. All righty, so ticket management is really the core of Zoho Desk. Within your, uh, when you first get into Desk, the first tab on the left is gonna be tickets. And I'll go through knowledge base and some of these other modules in the future uh, or later in this video, but the core of Desk is, is really ticket management. When we're creating tickets, uh, what, let's say once a ticket is created, then we can view these tickets through this module. And so there's a bunch of ways to view and modify this uh, page here so that we're looking at actionable tickets. In this case, I'm looking at all tickets, uh, but there's ways to create custom views or maybe we want to just show only my open tickets. In this case, I have one a ticket, one ticket that's assigned to me and it is open. In this view here, I'm looking at all departments, but in, uh, like Greg has shown, we can create multiple departments to separate and kind of group tickets based on teams and based on where that ticket should reside. Um, so if I was looking at internal, now I can see my internal tickets. And in this case, it's all tickets, but I can go to my, my tickets or my open tickets. And this will kind of make this list more actionable and less overwhelming for an agent. There's other ways to control this view. We have a classic view. We can do compact, which is slightly compact, table view. And then there's a few other work modes uh, views to kind of separate this into like a, a Kanban or we have handshake mode where it's going to group them based on uh, contacts or leads inside the CRM, if there's any potentials linked, uh, customers and so on. And then we have countdown mode, which is uh, really kind of uh, where they are as far as the timeline you've set. If it's overdue, due in six hours or no due date. Uh, timeline is really comes in play whenever you have SLAs set up uh, based on ticket replies. There needs to be a certain response time within maybe 24 hours or uh, 12 hours, depending on the SLAs you have set up. Uh, but uh, yeah, these different views are very helpful based on your uh, role in the support process. You might have a particular view to manage. There's other ways uh, also. So if you click on the HQ 
tab here. This is kind of an admin level dashboard where you have uh, some graphs, some uh, dashboard components, and a few other lists to review. And then also for an admin, maybe you wanna look at the agent queue where you can look at each different user. In this case, we only have one user inside of our uh, desk, but maybe there, you could imagine 20 or 30 different support agents and you could click on each one to reference their tickets uh, to kind of have a high level overview of, of their tickets. And again, you could change the work modes whenever you're in here. We also have could do the same for team queue. Uh, Greg had just shown you previously how to uh, create a team. And this in this case, we don't have any internal teams set, but if I go to support and then team queue, we'll see any of the tickets under support. Uh, in this case, we don't have any. So I'm gonna go back into our views and let's look at, uh, let's just go to all departments and then we'll see my open tickets across all departments. If I click on a ticket, there is a bunch of information that's displayed when we, when we click on a ticket. So certainly we have the conversation going back and forth and I'm actually gonna choose a different ticket. Let's go to all tickets. Here's probably a better example. Uh, so we have a conversation back and forth and all a ticket basically is, is an email conversation back and forth with a customer, maybe it's a vendor or uh, a lead coming in from your website. So an email comes in, uh, that email could be, maybe it's not an email, maybe it's a, a message from a form on your website and you wanna create a ticket, or it could even be a call. Maybe someone calls you and that can create a ticket. Uh, so there's a few different sources you can have that create tickets. Um, it could be an email, a call, or you could create one uh, on your own. Maybe someone uh, texts you and you don't have a way to receive that as a ticket. So you want to create a ticket on your own. There's a few different ways to, to create those tickets. And all a ticket represents is a communication back and forth between you and a person. Uh, it, that person, it could be, a, like I said, a, a lead, contact, or a vendor. There's a bunch of different ways we can kind of group or style these tickets or different uh, stakeholders involved. Now, when we're looking at a ticket, we have a few different things that show up. So we have ticket properties. This is going to show us the information that's linked to the ticket. So who, who's a ticket owner? In this case, it's unassigned. If I want to assign this to myself, then now it's assigned to me. We have statuses, open, on hold, escalated. These statuses can be customized. This is what you get out of the box whenever you first set up desk, but certainly you can imagine different statuses might be needed. Uh, maybe you want a follow-up status or a status that says pending review. Uh, there's a bunch of ways we can customize and then use those statuses to trigger workflow rules. We have a due date. This could be auto-defined or just set manually. And these uh, it would be auto-defined either based on a SLA or a workflow rule that you set up. Tags, a nice way to just kind of tag it really quick. Uh, these tags also do come into play when you want to see related support, uh, suggested articles. And so I'll go over that in, in just a second. And then we have some other information here. Maybe there's a phone number associated to this contact, or maybe the, uh, they called in and there, there was a phone number listed. Product name, if this ticket was related to a particular product, then go ahead and link it here. And then we have skills, uh, associated type, uh, and some other information. All of these uh, fields can certainly be customized. Maybe you don't care to see certain fields or you want additional fields to capture maybe a, a serial number for that product or uh, a source of some kind. There, we can certainly create additional fields here and even set those as mandatory fields if needed. Now, uh, we also, like I was saying, we have suggested articles. So if I click on suggested articles, this is gonna pull in articles from your knowledge base based on information inside of this ticket. And that information could come from within the message itself, or it could come from the ticket properties uh, fields. 
So in this case, this is a suggested article that's saying answering your first ticket. Uh, so we have Zoho Desk packs a bunch of features and here is a nice article that an agent can read whenever they are responding to this ticket. And they could even copy and paste this and use it as a template to respond to an email. So there's a, a big use case for using your knowledge base uh, to respond to tickets. So building out that knowledge base is going to be a big part of using Desk because there's a, there's a lot of ways you can save time and energy by templating those responses or giving some valuable information to your agents uh, so that they can respond effectively. We have timeline, so seeing where this ticket has been over the history. So in this case, it's uh, come in at uh, September 27th and not much has happened since then. So uh, timeline is a nice little uh, thing to look at. Followers is ability to add agents to that to follow the ticket. We can share it similar. Skills is a way to associate skills. And then we have some integration fields here. So we can integrate Zoho Desk with CRM, campaigns. Uh, there's another way to do parent-child ticketing. But CRM and campaigns, these are other Zoho apps that now when you're responding to this ticket, you have that information to reference. Uh, so maybe you wanted to look at their uh, related potentials or any of the notes previously uh, created. Uh, maybe there were tasks associated to this CRM contact and you want to reference those before you respond to this ticket. And same with campaigns. Maybe they email you uh, or the, the ticket is regarding a particular service that they got a, an email from through campaigns. So maybe you want to review that email and uh, reference uh, specifically what that email was saying so you can respond in the best way possible. So these integrations, and these aren't the only two you have. Uh, Greg is going to show some other integrations that you can uh, throw into, camp, uh, into, into Zoho Desk to uh, preview this information or review this uh, with the most information possible. On the ticket itself, we have the conversation. We have what's called a resolution. When the ticket is closed, you can add in a resolution. And then once this resolution is saved, you can also save it and add it to your knowledge base as an article. And again, this resolution, if saved as an article, could uh, present itself in future tickets as a suggested article. So that's a really, uh, you, really great use case for uh, using the knowledge base combined with the tickets. We also have time entry. Time entry, you can certainly manually add in a time entry, or you could click this little play button up on the ticket itself to start the timer. And whenever you are tracking your time, after you end your uh, time, it's going to log it here. And then there's a little dollar sign that says, it kind of hints at, you can, you can charge for your time on these tickets. Uh, that comes into play with your agent cost per hour. And these are just settings on the back end that you can set up additional cost. You can throw in additional cost, and then we have total cost. Setting that as either billing or non-billing for a future invoice. And that can those invoices can be created through Zoho uh, Finance Suite. So within Zoho Books, we can integrate that as well and trigger these invoices straight from Zoho Desk. Other, ta other tabs we have are attachments. So logging the attachment here. If someone actually sent an email with attachment, with an attachment, then you would see that within this list here, and as well as any other attachments that are sent back and forth. This is just a list of all of those attachments. Other uh, tabs we have here, uh, so we have the attachments module at the top. Uh, that's going to show a list of any attachments going back and forth. Uh, so if the ticket was created with an attachment, it should show up here as well as any other attachments that are going back and forth. We have activities. Uh, this is a task related to the ticket. And in this case, this task has a separate set of statuses. So this is another thing you can use to um, trigger action items based on tickets. Approval process and history. History is pretty straightforward. Approval process is submitting this to a support manager to get the final confirmation that it's completed. 
All right. So like I mentioned earlier, there's ways to customize these ticket uh, properties. And to customize the ticket properties, we can go into setup. Uh, before I go into that, actually, let me show you what it looks like on the edit view. So when we create or edit a ticket manually, this is what the view looks like. So we can link this ticket to a department, link, it gets linked to a contact, it can also get linked to an account if you want to uh, link them there. And then we have an email, phone, and uh, subject, and then description. So all of this is by default what Zoho Desk presents you whenever you first start up. Uh, but you can customize this. So if you want to customize it, maybe you want to remove certain field or add an, another field, then we go to setup and layouts and fields. The layout and fields can be modified independently per each department. Uh, so in this case, I'm looking at the layout for tickets, uh, but the layout could also be customized for the uh, contracts, accounts, contacts, and so on. In this case, I want to show you what it would look like for tickets. And then, like I said, departments, it can be department specific. So maybe you want certain fields for support versus internal. Uh, this is how you would do it. So you'd come in for internal. Let's say we want to uh, come in here and uh, remove classifications. I can remove that field here. Some of these fields are not removable. You can see non-removable standard field, uh, but some are. So Anything that is not a non-removable non field, you can remove it. Let's say we also want to add in a pick list. We can throw in a new pick list here. And one new feature that Zoho has added is the ability to add values in bulk. And this is, you'll see this in other Zoho apps where you can essentially copy and paste or import from a CSV. Uh, this is really nice and a huge time saver and uh, uh, helps you quickly add options in here. So instead of having to type them in one by one, you can just import or manual entry. And as long as they are comma separated or just on a new line, they will be imported in here. Uh, the next item I want to review, so this is managing or editing the ticket itself. Another spot uh, to manage tickets is within your dashboards. So I had shown you the HQ dashboard, but there's another place to manage this, which is within the analytics tab above. And under analytics, we have dashboards, reports, and advanced analytics. So under dashboards, we can add in a component. Components uh, could be predefined, so tickets by department, uh, we have a few other predefined components in here and then we can certainly bring in some other stuff so maybe tickets by channel uh, we can customize this we don't have too many uh, tickets in here so not much data to present uh, or no data in this case but uh, based on that report then you would certainly see some components populated this dashboard uh, can be totally customized on your end. I think when you first join in, there's just maybe one uh, dashboard component to modify, uh, but certainly adding them is very easy. Under reports, we have a few different things in here. So we have our global reports, ticket by department. We have a few under static reports. And then this is just giving you some information based on that report. So agent availability, agent performance, incoming threads, uh, and so on. We can create other reports in here. So if I wanted to add a global report or schedule a global report, we could. When I add in a report, it's going to ask me what the primary module is, any other related modules. So maybe I wanted to pull in the tickets and their contacts, set it as a tabular summary or matrix report. And then uh, I need to go through columns. It's basically building out these reports. And a quick little tip, if you hit the command button, you can select multiple and then go ahead and uh, throw that over. Grouping, columns to total. And this could, maybe you wanna bring in the total time spent or number of threads. Uh, this could be a sum, average, lowest or highest value. 
And then last on report, you can throw in a criteria so that uh, maybe you're only seeing certain tickets that are opened or any of the ones that have been closed. And then last, if these reports don't get you what you need, the other thing, the other, the other option you have is advanced analytics. And this is tying into Zoho analytics, which uh, really the possibilities are endless as far as the SQL and other uh, sorts of criteria you can combine into these uh, reports. Uh, so if you can't get them with the dashboard and the reports tabs, then certainly you'll be able to build it out inside of advanced analytics either using SQL or uh, some other pre-built uh, actions that they have in, in here. All right, uh, a few other things. So one other big update that uh, has happened inside of Desk this year is the ability to track email read receipts. And this has to be enabled. So it doesn't start out by default. And to enable it, you need to go under data administration Privacy, privacy settings, and then read receipts. You kind of have to go back over to the left here and you see read receipts. This does have to be enabled. It's not enabled by default. And once you enable this, then you can select your departments. You want to start tracking. And that's pretty much all you have to do. Now, whenever an email or when a ticket is read, uh, now it has to be done through an email. It's not... It, I don't, I don't believe this works for SMS or for any tickets, obviously manually created, but if it's sent via an email and you respond via an email, if they read it, it will be tracked. And so that's a, a nice setting that Zoho Desk has enabled recently. All right, so now uh, I've kind of gone over ticket management and I've hinted at a few things inside of the knowledge base, but I want to dive deep deeper into the knowledge base because this is a whole side, a whole second half of Ticket or Zoho Desk is, is the knowledge base. All right. Uh, so we have, uh, like I was talking about, we have like the front end with the tickets, and then we have maybe kind of like the back end with knowledge base. And it doesn't really have to be that way. The knowledge base can appear in a few different ways, uh, either by suggested articles, uh, or you could just come in here and review some articles. And the other option is this: these articles could appear on a help center uh, using like a, a widget icon at the bottom of your website. Maybe once you hit in on your website, there's that little pop-up at the bottom right screen of your website that says, uh, need help finding this. Here is a list of related articles. So these articles do sync in with Zoho Sales IQ, or they could appear on the uh, Zoho Desk's Help Center as well. So inside of Desk, we do have what's called a Help Center. And there's also an ASAP widget, which we probably won't spend too much time on today, but uh, we do have other videos out uh, inside of YouTube that go over the ASAP widget and the possibilities with that. Within the knowledge base, we are creating articles and these articles are linked to departments. So in this case, we have our demo for Zenata department and we have our internal department. When we are creating an article, it's going to be linked to one of these departments. Now, this is an article here uh, answering your first ticket and we can see some basic information. It's a title. The article itself we can tag them and then we can also see likes and dislikes this is a new feature uh, at least for the help center side of things where uh, if you're on a help center and you want to as a as a uh, end user they have access to what's called a help center where they can view all of the knowledge base articles and they can also create tickets from that help center as well and when they're inside of the help center, they can like, dislike, and even comment on articles from within that help center. So tickets can be uh, published externally or just internally. In this case, this is a, uh, let's see. Oh, display permissions. Okay, so this one is only available to agents. 
But we could say, no, it's also uh, available to registered users, which means users who have created an account, uh, end users through the Help Center that have created an account, or it's available to the public, all users. And then the article owner categories, uh, we could even link it to subcategories and then tags. Tags are a nice way to make sure it gets linked as a suggested article on a ticket. So if a tag matches, it should pull it in as a suggested article. And then we have a few other things down here at the bottom uh, for SEO optimization. So title, some meta keywords and meta description. Uh, so these help build in SEO uh, capabilities through the Help Center. And I've talked a little bit about the Help Center. So let me just show you what that looks like. Whenever you create a uh, department, that department, or when you create, a, when you start out with desk, it creates a help center by default. And it'll, it'll create that URL, which is publicly accessible. So if I go to that URL, it's uh, basically going to show you a list of knowledge base articles, which this one, there's, there's no knowledge base articles that are public yet. Uh, and then we could also show my area, which is a list of any of the support tickets that are associated to you. And then you can also customize this a little bit or submit a ticket uh, for your own. Now, in this case, uh, we haven't enabled the support ticket for uh, public. You actually, you have to sign in, but there's a bunch of different settings with the help center. So we have access settings, languages, uh, and some other customization setups in here. I believe we also have a full video tutorial on setting up the help center inside a desk. So definitely check that one out as well. Um, so I won't spend too much uh, or much more time on this, but there's a lot of capabilities within the help center to uh, act as a portal for end users to get to those knowledge base articles or to create and review their tickets. Back into this knowledge base, um, essentially it's a list of t articles. We can see views, likes, dislikes, and comments. And there's a bunch of reporting aspects we can do on articles as well. Now that pretty much covers it as far as ticket management in the knowledge base. I hope that kind of sheds some light on how these knowledge base articles can also interact with tickets and present helpful articles and support your agents when they are responding. So I'm gonna pass it on to Greg and he's gonna go over some automation capabilities and integrations. Thank you very much, Josh. Uh, so we're going to start by just going through all of the different options here under the automation tab under your settings. We we'll start up here at the top with assignment rules. Now there are two different kinds of assignment rules. We have direct assignment and round robin. Direct assignment is just what it says. You specify certain criteria that will dictate who should be assigned to a particular ticket. So if I create a new direct assignment rule. Uh, I can execute this rule to happen on creation of a ticket. So as soon as the ticket comes in, or if this should continue to check on update of a ticket so that if some parameters change on a ticket, it may get reassigned to somebody else. I add my target and here you can select whether this should apply to any department or to a specific department. Then you can set up the criteria. Uh, if there is any, there doesn't necessarily have to be, then you can choose to keep the ticket in the same department or move it to another department. And then also you can assign that ticket either to a specific user or you can assign it to a particular team, or you could have it remain unassigned. You also have the round robin rules. Now a little difference you'll notice that over here next to the round robin rules uh, 
you know, on off switch. This is done by department first. So a round robin rule can't exist across all departments. You have to make one for each department. And if I'm making a round robin rule, then when I select again, either on create or update, Robin rule. A couple of notes you see down here that this rule does not reassign tickets that are assigned via another automation. And the rule will not assign more tickets than the number specified under the threshold. Because in a round robin, you have two different methods, uh, a round robin assignment or a skill based assignment. First, we'll talk about the round robin assignment, where you will set up uh, for any particular agents. you can uh, set a threshold of how many tickets should each agent have uh, before things start getting assigned uh, just to whoever has the fewest tickets, right? So that way, if you have, say, three agents, one already has 10 tickets, one has five, and another only has two, the round robin will actually start assigning to the person who has the fewest tickets until there's a tie, and then it'll just kind of keep going back and forth, trying to keep tickets as evenly distributed as possible. The other option is that you can uh, do a skills-based assessment or skills-based assignment where tickets will be assigned to agents that only match with the particular skills uh, that that ticket is associated with. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Uh, actually, we'll just go ahead and jump down to skills to stay on that topic. Skills are uh, ways that you can sort of tag different tickets uh, to indicate that they should be pushed to some agents over others. For example, uh, we here at Zanata work with all different Zoho applications, and our support tickets might be dealing with a particular application. And some of our consultants or developers uh, may be more skilled in one than the other. So you can create a skill. So if I were to create a skill for Zoho Desk, and then I can associate a skill type. In this case, uh, I've already created the application skill type, but you can uh, create additional skill types to group the different skills together. Then I have to specify some form of criteria. Uh, so if I were to just say that the description of a ticket contains the word desk, and then I can associate different agents that have this particular skill. That way, if I'm using the round robin assignment and I'm using a skills based assignment, then only agents that have those appropriate skills for that ticket will be assigned to those tickets. Moving on down the automation list, we have various notification settings that you can set up. These are notifications that could either go to your customers or your agents or your admins. These also are done by department. Uh, first up, we have the contact notifications. For any of these notification groups, the first column on the left are any email notifications. And then on the right, a few of these notifications have the option to receive an SMS notification. So you have under contacts, things like receiving a new ticket, uh, if a ticket is closed, if a comment has been added, this is whether or not the customer, your contact, is going to be notified of that change or update. Then you have notifications for your agents when a ticket is assigned to them, if a comment has been added, if they've been mentioned in a ticket, if a task has been assigned, all sorts of different options. Uh, similarly, you have notifications that will go to all of the agents in an entire department, uh, such as if a ticket has been moved to that department, 
uh, or if a new ticket has been created in that department, or if uh, there has been a shared ticket uh, created in that department. Then notifications that will be sent to all of the agents in a particular team. Again, the ticket is assigned to them, the comment is edited, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the other screen we have here under the notify section of automation is the feeds preference. If your agents are assigned to different teams, then you can turn on team feeds, and these will be configured individually by department. Uh, if that is enabled, then on the home screen, if they're looking at their list views, you'll see that there is an option up here for team feeds. So that's what that is referring to of basically, what do you want to pop into this team feed? So if we go back to notify and feeds preference, here you can establish what events should be depicted within the team feed. Should it be when tickets are created, updated, picked up, closed, replied, so you can have all of these, none of these, uh, or you can mix and match. Moving on to workflows. So in workflows, we set up different rules. And then on each of these rules, you can set up a trigger of either an alert, a task, a field update, or a custom function. When I create a rule, and again, these are also by department, I select which module this rule is going to be triggered off of. Most commonly, things will be triggered off of the tickets module, but uh, you might set up something to run off of a particular account getting created or when a event slash meeting happens. Uh, your products, if a new product is created or edited, something might need to happen, uh, or one of your agents uh, records a time entry. You'll give the rule a name, and then you choose how this rule is going to be executed. What is going to trigger it? Uh, you can select to have it be on just creation of a ticket, you can have it be on the edit of a ticket as well, or field update. You'll notice there's a slight difference with the edit and field update. These are radio buttons because you can only have one or the other of these selected, either when any field on a ticket gets edited or if you want to specify that only certain fields, if they're edited, would uh, execute this rule. But all the rest of these you'll notice are check boxes. So I could have, uh, as many of these checked as I wanted. So in this case, this rule would execute when a ticket's created uh, or when any field is updated, when a customer replies, when an agent responds, when there's a comment. So this rule would be triggering all the time. Uh, most likely you're probably only gonna want a rule triggering uh, on uh, certain events. Uh, you also, after you select the initial trigger, any criteria that after this trigger has happened that might include or exclude uh, certain records in that category. So let's say that I want this to happen every time a ticket is created, but if I uh, don't want this to execute where if the subject uh, contains uh, no no reply or something then you could specify that here and uh, exclude certain uh, tickets from this rule then under the actions as i mentioned before we have alerts tasks field updates and custom functions uh, alerts are going to be uh, notifications either through email or sms uh, field updates to uh, update a particular field on the ticket. And then a recent addition to desk in 2020, during 2022, now going into 2023, is uh, the Zoho team has added a lot of pre-built uh, custom actions here in this gallery. So you have things like assigning the ticket or adding a comment automatically sending an email reply, uh, replying via instant messaging, notifying your 
uh, agents via instant messaging, adding or removing tags, followers, marking as spam, adding skills. So there's a lot of different uh, uh, gallery options that have been added here for most commonly requested uh, functions. Then you also can create a task, or if you still haven't found the particular functionality that you need, you can always write some custom deluge. And you also have an external action available here for sending a notification in your click organization if you are using it. Uh, so you would select one of these options. So I could say add tags. And then I can create a, this is the new tag addition. And any existing tags that I have in my system, I could say would be added to this. And the record ID is hard coded to be the ID of the ticket that this is being executed on. So you can see I've got my action there. Finally, I'll hit save and I can see that my rule has been added to my list of active rules. If I want to turn this rule off, but not necessarily delete it, I can deactivate the rule and it will move to my list of inactive workflow rules. So that way, if I need to work on it, edit it a little bit, maybe need to make some adjustments, I can do that before moving it back to being an active rule. So that way it wouldn't interrupt anyone's workflow. Uh, moving along, we uh, we already discussed uh, skills and the skill types. Uh, so let's move down to blueprints. Blueprints uh, are a way to sort of put tickets and different cases sort of on rails. If you have a very specific process that you want all of your agents to follow when it comes to interacting with and updating uh, tickets, you can do so through blueprints. I'm gonna click this perform sample transitions uh, button to show you what that interaction would look like when you get the blueprints configured. So what your agents would see is on a ticket down at the bottom, you'd see this big blue band that says what the current state of this ticket is. What is its status? So in this case, it's open. And I have a little note down here that there's 24 hours left of this particular uh, stage before it will automatically get moved to another state. And any applicable transitions uh, that could happen for this ticket will be down here as buttons. So here I have start blueprint onboarding. The transitions, uh, again, show you the different ways that this ticket could move from one state to another. So there may be only one option to move forward, or there could be several. And on the back end, you can see this is the sample blueprint that this ticket is operating under. Each of these white boxes represents a different state, a different status that that ticket can be in. Then you can drag and drop uh, different transitions uh, or buttons to move you from one state to the other. And those transitions uh, will perform various uh, updates or actions, depending on what you set up in here, uh, because on a particular transition, you can have different uh, criteria for, well, who should be able to click this button? Should it be the record owner or uh, agents from a specific team? Uh, you can allow to transition the owner from a, you can allow an owner from a different department to transition the ticket. Um, and then any other additional criteria. Uh, the during is where you could have different messages or requests pop up while performing the transition, such as uh, requesting uh, any sort of data validation that in order to transition from this state to the next, uh, these certain fields have to be filled in. Uh, and then afterwards, you can set up any alerts, field updates, tasks, or custom functions to execute after executing the transition, similar to what we just set up in the workflow rules. So again, blueprints, if you have a very particular defined process,
blueprints work great. The caveat about them is that once a ticket has entered into a blueprint, it has to go through that blueprint that's been set up and you can't edit the status or state of that ticket um, in any other way except by the rules established by the blueprint. So that's why we say you need a very well-defined process in order to make use of these. If your tickets are very flexible and they can constantly be bouncing from one status to the next, a blueprint might not be the best choice. Uh, you'll be better off creating individual workflow rules uh, to execute any actions that might need to happen automatically. And moving along, we have macros. Macros, very similar to the workflows. Uh, you can set up different alerts, tasks, field updates, and custom functions. The difference of macros is that they will exist as clickable buttons on either an individual ticket or in a list view of tickets. Uh, you can set a macro to execute on a single ticket, or if you select multiple tickets, you can run that macro on all those tickets at once. Uh, similar to the workflow rule, if I create a macro, then I simply specify what actions am I going to add. Now, you'll notice that here under the actions, that gallery list of lots of different custom actions are not available here under macros. All of those uh, pre-built gallery actions are only available currently under workflows. Although I'm sure as uh, time goes on that Zoho will probably add those uh, to macros or to uh, notification rules or schedules uh, in the near future, but we'll still have to wait on those. But you can always still create a field update or a custom function and uh, code whatever functionality you need out of these macro buttons. Moving on down to uh, escalating or SLA, service level agreements. These are for uh, creating specified processes, somewhat similar to blueprints for uh, escalating tickets as necessary if the tickets are not being resolved or responded to uh, fast enough uh, according to whatever your standards are or compared to whatever your standards are for particular clientele. Because you could have different levels of support. If somebody is on, say, a standard support plan versus a premium support plan uh, with your organization, they may be entitled to different uh, levels of escalation. So you can set up different uh, priorities uh, or different, different SLAs, different agreements uh, that can be triggered on uh, priority, for example, that if a ticket is uh, created and if the priority is high, medium, or low, then you can specify here, well, how soon should the ticket be resolved, completely closed out? Uh, in this case, if the priority is high, it would be six hours. Uh, if you can also set uh, just response uh, criteria, uh, not necessarily you have to get the whole problem solved, but at least seeing that there is constant communication with a particular customer. Some other uh, pre-built SLAs when you first open up your Zoho desk that Zoho includes are gold, silver, and bronze SLAs. These are if you wanted to attach specific priority levels to certain customers. So that if you have somebody that's on that high premium plan, then any ticket that comes in that's associated to an account that's labeled as gold uh, will need to have its tickets uh, resolved within six hours. Uh, if the priority is high or if the priority is low, it needs to be resolved within a day. And you can add multiple targets to any one particular SLA that if a ticket falls under certain conditions, uh, then you can specify how soon should it be responded to, uh, how soon should it be resolved. And you can also have this work on uh, differing operational hours. So if you have people that are working in uh, different time zones, uh, you could uh, set a criteria that 
if the ticket owner is say somebody in your East Coast team, then you would want to create this target with the operational hours for whatever your East Coast operating hours are. Uh, that way, that way your agents don't get a ticket escalated just because they were, you know, asleep uh, for eight hours. Uh, you can set different escalations to happen if a response doesn't happen in the appropriate time or if a resolution doesn't happen in the appropriate time. So if I say that this needs to be resolved, let's say within five hours, then I can select how is this ticket going to be escalated. Uh, you can escalate it uh, on the time that the execution happens. So that would be the five hours. Or if I say, well, a ticket needs to be resolved within five hours, but I want this to be escalated before we hit that five hours, I could say that, uh, that the escalation needs to happen 30 minutes before the five hours are up. Then you can escalate to particular agents, or you can select teams, roles, uh, different uh, contacts, the ticket owner. Uh, there are templates that you can set up that will notify uh, the agent that the ticket has been escalated to them, as well as notifying the uh, original owner. Uh, then you can also reset, you can also reassign the ticket as part of this SLA uh, if you feel that that is necessary and also change the ticket's priority. You can also add additional levels of escalation that uh, let's say here I have that 30 minutes before I escalate the ticket and I'm going to notify this agent that something needs to happen. If they manage to resolve it, great, it's done. If it's still not resolved, I could say on the time, so we hit those five hours, I could escalate it once again uh, to even further up the chain and say, hey, we're now at DEF CON 2. <laughs> and I can even add a third or fourth level of escalation. Four is the maximum. Uh, but you could have, say, level three occur if it's been 30 minutes after uh, the deadline of five hours to resolve the ticket, then, you know, obviously this could go, I don't know, straight to the CEO. It just depends on how, how severe uh, of a situation we're talking about and where it is that you like to send those escalations. Uh, these different SLAs uh, can be assigned, as I mentioned, to particular uh, accounts, customers, or clients. So if I come here to customers, then I have my different contacts here and I can go look at my list of accounts. If I select a particular account, uh, then here on the little sidebar, I have SLAs and contracts. So I can assign an SLA to this particular account, select new SLA. And let's say that these guys are going to be uh, a gold SLA. Now I can just hit submit as is and now they are indefinitely on the gold service level agreement. Uh, they are uh, always gonna get the best service from us, no matter what. Uh, but let's say I operate on a contract basis that they're, they are a gold SLA customer, but you know only as long as their particular contract lasts. I can, uh, come here and create a particular contract associated to an SLA. So if I say that they are gonna be a gold SLA customer, but I wanna create a contract, then I can further specify, well, what is this contract called? When does this contract start? And when does it end? So that uh, if they're, they get gold status for a year, that once we're past a year, that SLA will automatically be dropped. And then I can create notifications that, oh, well, I should let my agent in charge of this account know, uh, let's say 40 days before their contract is going to expire to reach out to the customer and say, hey, do you want to re-up and continue with your gold SLA standard? 
going back to the automations tab, we have uh, supervisor rules. Supervisor rules are ones that are, these rules will be executed every hour inside of desk based on criteria for a particular ticket. So if I say this is a new supervise rule. And again, uh, these are department specific. I can set uh, what business hours uh, these should apply to, because again, these are every hour, but only during whatever particular business hours I select. Uh, so if everybody operates on the same hours of like nine to five, uh, then you can select those and these will occur every hour between nine and five. Then I select the specific criteria that uh, this time-based action should occur on. And these are on the ticket level. So if I were to say status is open, then that means that this time-based action is going to occur every hour during my business calendar hours on any ticket that is in the open status. So it's sort of like a, um, a pre-filtered uh, schedule. Now, I am a little bit more limited in the actions that I can assign to these supervisor rules. I can only do either an alert, which is an email or SMS notification, a specific field update, or creating a task. I do not have the option for adding a custom function to a supervisor rule. Uh, but still, if you have a a uh, simple alert or field update that you want to execute on a regular basis, uh, consistently checking uh, these tickets. So for example, if it's, you can set up a rule to, similar to an SLA, notify an agent if, hey, your ticket has been open for three days. Don't you think you ought to do something about that? You can set that up with one of these uh, supervisor rules. Uh, we've already talked about the uh, support contracts, just any of the contracts that you've set up for your accounts will appear here. And then finally, under automation, we have a uh, schedule similar to the supervisor rules. Uh, these occur on a regular basis. The difference is that with a schedule, you select uh, the frequency that this schedule will operate under. Uh, so you give it a name and you decide when is this schedule going to begin. So you might pick a particular date. So we could just say on the 22nd, uh, this is going to start at 12 p.m. And then you can choose the frequency of this scheduled function. Maybe this is only going to happen the one time, in which case you could leave it as never. Uh, more likely, you could set this as it's going to trigger every hour or every day, every week, month, year, uh, or a custom frequency. So every one hour, every day, you can specify certain days of the week that it should occur on. Uh, and then you can specify when it should end. Should it end after a certain number of executions or should it end on a particular date? So a lot of flexibility, a lot of customization there. And then once you've uh, determined how often this should be happening, you can associate uh, or associate an existing or create a new function uh, that the schedule will run on. So while the supervisor rules that I mentioned before don't have custom functions with these schedules, your only option is to create a custom function. So it's all effectively kind of doing the same thing uh, they just sort of have it sitting in different uh, spots. Also, the supervisor rules don't afford you that same uh, scheduling flexibility of exactly when you want this run. They simply run every hour on the hour. And that is it. That is uh, all of the different automation options that you have in Zoho Desk. As you can see, a lot of different things. Uh, really gives you an opportunity to streamline your workload, uh, take a lot of that busy work off the shoulders of your agents and get your customers the support they need as fast as possible. So now hopping down into the marketplace.
to look at some more integrations. Let's go there. Zoho Desk on its own is a very powerful tool, but there are a few uh, integrations and uh, marketplace extensions that you can get that can enhance it even further. We get to those extensions by going to your settings and coming to the marketplace. Here you have the options of uh, selecting from just the marketplace as a whole, or there are a few specific pre-built integrations with Zoho Desk, uh, such as with various Zoho apps. Uh, a few of them uh, Josh already went over earlier in the video, such as being able to attach a contact to a CRM contact, and you'd be able to see their Zoho CRM information from within the ticket. Uh, similarly, you can set up integrations with uh, various apps in the finance suite, Zoho Invoice, Zoho Books, Inventory, Subscriptions, all of these uh, integrations can sync your desk contacts with your other app contacts, uh, as well as being able to create records in those apps without having to leave Zoho Desk. So I could create a new Zoho subscription for a customer from within Desk rather than needing to uh, jump into Zoho subscriptions and create uh, one for them. Similarly, in Zoho Inventory, I could create a sales order or an invoice from within a ticket. Uh, they're pretty simple to set up. You simply click onto one of these particular uh, integrations. Then you'll click on Integrate, and you'll follow uh, whatever the instructions are for that particular extension. Uh, you'll set up your configuration details. Uh, determine if there's any kind of syncing going on between the apps, uh, how you want different fields from a Zoho Desk uh, item to be synced with a, in this case, a Zoho Inventory product, right? So in Zoho Desk, there's a field called Product Code. Likely in Zoho Inventory, that would go to a SKU or a manufacturer might be called uh, something different in Zoho Inventory, just depending on how you have your Zoho Inventory system set up. Uh, we also have, uh, as Josh mentioned, the option of integrating Zoho Analytics uh, with Zoho Desk uh, to give you a lot of powerful analytics tools uh, for keeping an eye on your agent's performance and your customer's experiences. You can also uh, integrate with Zoho Projects to create tasks and uh, submit any issues uh, similar to the uh, bug tracker to uh, keep essentially get problems in front of the right people who need to start working on them uh, as fast as possible because perhaps your help desk agents they're more acting as the interaction between the the customer in your company but they may they may not be the actual developers who need to fix a particular thing and so projects might be where your actual operations team uh, will be there ready to fix anything that needs to be fixed. Uh, we also have uh, integration for Biggin, which uh, very similar to the CRM, uh, it's just kind of a more streamlined, straight out of the box uh, version. Uh, very particular to uh, Zoho Desk is we have Zoho Assist and Zoho Lens, which uh, Zoho Assist uh, is a way to do screen sharing uh, support sessions with your customers. Uh, if you need to take control of their screen, have them share uh, their system with you. Zoho Lens is another great application for extending your ability to help your customers. Zoho Lens uh, uses augmented reality technology with your customer's uh, smartphone to be able to show in a 3D environment uh, your customer's product to your agent. And your agent can actually create live annotations or comments that your user will then be able to see through their phone screen displayed on the product itself, uh, anything that they need to uh, try to inspect uh, on the agent's behalf. So really helps to uh, 
you know, before you have to send a field service agent out there to assess the situation, there's a lot that you can do remotely in real time. Also, if you are a Microsoft user, some important uh, extensions here. If you are using Office 365 as your email client, you can integrate directly with uh, Zoho Desk so that you don't need to share any of your uh, Office 365 login information uh, with Zoho Desk. That essentially Office 365 will be the actual mail servers uh, and your users uh, will log in using Office 365, but then they will be able to use the Zoho Desk interface for interacting with those tickets. On the other side, if you are a user of Microsoft Teams, then you can actually have Zoho Desk be the server and holding all of your tickets. But if your agents prefer to work in Microsoft Teams, you can respond to and view tickets from within Microsoft Teams uh, using this extension. And these are uh, both new additions to Desk here at the end of 2022 going into 2023. Uh, a few other uh, pre-built extensions. Uh, as I've we've mentioned a couple of things about uh, creating uh, SMS notifications. Uh, you can uh, send SMSs uh, using some of these built-in add-ons. Uh, you will have to uh, purchase credits from uh, either of these vendors, SMS Magic or uh, Clickatel. And then you can configure for those vendors, uh, which number should an SMS message be sent to. Most likely it's just gonna be your contact's phone number, but if you had a separate field uh, that you were using for mobile, then you could specify that. Uh, and then you can determine that for uh, the from number that will appear, should it be coming from your agent's mobile phone number field or their phone phone number field. Uh, in addition, you have uh, Jira or Salesforce uh, for, again, just tracking your cases and your data, uh, similar to the CRM integration with Salesforce. If you wanted to uh, have the, if you're using your Salesforce as your main CRM and you wanted to use Zoho Desk uh, to manage your ticketing system. Uh, if you're not using Click, uh, you want to use uh, Slack instead, you can also uh, have your Ticket updates, uh, go to your agents if your agents are all on Slack to let them know the ticket's been assigned to them, that a ticket has been escalated to them, et cetera. Uh, then we also have uh, Zapier that has a lot of different templates uh, to connect your Zoho Desk to various other systems uh, that can, say, create uh, connections to MailChimp or your Gmail or your Google Calendar, Shopify, lots of different possibilities. And actually, if we go back to the uh, Zoho Marketplace options, uh, we do also have Zoho Flow, which is uh, Zoho's equivalent of Zapier. Uh, there's also a lot of different connectors possibilities in there. Uh, Zoho Flow does have a few pre-built uh, commonly used flows for Zoho Desk, um, not nearly as many as Zapier straight out of the gate, uh, but you have some things for if you are using JotForm or Trustpilot or Wootrick, that uh, these can create tickets or contacts uh, in your desk. But you certainly are not limited to these options for Zoho Flow. You can always go to uh, flow.zoho.com, uh, which is included if you are a Zoho One subscription. And uh, you know, on creation of a ticket or update of a ticket, uh, you can have something happen you know, you can create things to happen in QuickBooks or in uh, Zoho Invoice, or all the the possibilities are uh, very extensive in Zoho Flow uh, that unfortunately we can't explain all of them here. But uh, you you'll be able to do almost anything you could think of. Uh, finally, uh, kind of as more overall. Uh, if we come back here to Marketplace All, there's a number of extensions out there in the Marketplace uh, that are put together uh, that you can uh, enhance your, C your Zoho Desk system with. One of the newer ones from the Zoho Corporation uh, that hasn't yet made it over into their pre-built integrations, but I'm sure will over time, is a Zoho Campaigns for Zoho Desk. So you can install that. Uh, 
uh, and it will allow you to see for a particular contact all the campaigns that they've been involved in. You can also, from within a, a ticketing screen, you can add a contact to a particular mailing list um, or create an even brand new mailing list based off of uh, your desk contacts and uh, adding them straight into a Zoho campaign from there. Uh, as always, uh, after you've installed a particular extension, you can, by clicking on all and coming here to installed extensions, you can see anything that you have already installed. Click it if there are any particular settings that you might need to change. So in the case of the Zoho campaigns, uh, I could set up that, do I want it on every department or just a few departments? Uh, do I want to allow everybody access to it or do I want to specify by particular agent or particular agent profiles of who should have access? Uh, and finally, you'll also notice any updates that might need to happen to your extensions you can get to from here. You'll see the little notification here saying that this particular extension is asking for an update. And so you'll find that up here in the upper corner here or you can simply click it on the list there. And there you have it. Those are uh, just some of the many, many different extensions and integrations that you can use to further enhance your Zoho Desk experience for your agents, as well as for your customers. And now I believe it's time for some Q and A. All right, Greg. Well, it looks like we don't have any questions from the live audience. Uh, I guess we must have explained everything just perfectly in this we long are just hour that and a good. half. <laughs> we are that good. Yep. Well, if you have any questions at a later time and you're watching this, uh, don't be shy. Write to us in the questions or write your questions in the comments below. Uh, Greg, you want to uh, give a highlight on what we're coming out with uh, soon? Yes. Uh, speaking of questions, uh, tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time uh, will be the first episode of Azaz. Uh, Ask Zanata anything about Zoho, uh, the, where we're taking the Q&A portion of the CRM Zen show and making it its own standalone program so we can really get down to the nitty gritty of uh, the questions that uh, you, the viewers, ask us either on these videos or over at uh, Club Sonata, which you should all definitely go to and join. Uh, but yeah, sure to be a fun time. Uh, stick around for that uh, tomorrow. Awesome. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us on this webinar. If you want to reach us, you can go to zanata.com and click the book a meeting and our sales team would be happy to talk with you. As always, be sure to visit Club Zanata. Uh, club.zanata.com. That's our online community where you can ask questions and engage, engage with other Zoho users. Right. And on our website is where uh, you'll find complete episodes of the CRM Zen Show podcast, where Brett and Tyler talk about all things Zoho every week, uh, as well as other webinars like this one. We would love it if you subscribe to us here on YouTube and your choice of podcasting app. Uh, and if you as we've mentioned, there are a lot of our shows out there. You can get a nice distilled digest of what's coming up by subscribing to our newsletter, dropped into your inbox every Monday. And we'll see you guys next month for the webinar on Zoho Social. Have a good one.